guys, what's up? <sighs> nice to see you again, Striped family. So today, I always wear like glasses or contacts. These aren't a new thing, so yeah. Anyways, I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. As most of you know, that's what brought a lot of you here. I don't know, there's something on there. Um, so, with that and hypermobility in general, you're at a higher risk for um, anxiety. So, I have severe anxiety. <laughs> um, so it wasn't a shocker to see that those two had a correlation. It just really wasn't. Everything that I've had like secondary wrong with me, we found out is, no, it's just common with Ehlers-Danlos. Okay, great, so glad. Anyways, so let's get started on here. So anxiety, what is anxiety? So it's just kind of like this constant worry and stress over something. Um, for some people, it's kind of over everything. For Because I have like generalized anxiety disorder is one of mine. So mine is just kind of a constant anxious state. Every, you know, little things make me nervous, you know, things like that. Um, and... For others, it's like they have certain, like, triggers per se. I don't really like that term, but it's kind of the best term to use for this. So, like, very specific things that make them anxious. Like someone who's claustrophobic or afraid of elevators. I guess those two kind of go together a lot, huh? Somebody who's afraid of heights, you know. Like, those things cause them anxiety. But someone who has anxiety has it all the time, more often than other people. So, that's what we're going to talk about today. So, I had anxiety. I've had anxiety since, I don't know, the first time that I remember, like, stories that made me think, oh, yeah, that must have just been the start, was in kindergarten when I refused to go to school. That was great. I wouldn't go with anybody but my mom, pretty much. Um, sometimes my dad's mom. Um, I think that was mostly just because... I didn't go over there for, like, long periods of time, if that makes sense. We're not 100% sure. It took me until I was 16 years old to stay away from my parents overnight. So, that was without throwing a fit. Because I did it with my grandparents. I just had meltdowns, lots of them, and acted out really bad. I was a terrible child, but in a sense, nobody actually knew that I was actually struggling with anxiety. And, um... Yeah, so that's when it started for me anyway. Some people don't have it start till like in puberty or 20s, you know, something like that. It really just depends on the person. It doesn't have to be like any particular reason like how I told you guys I had had an eating disorder previously and then my car accident like brought it back up and made, you know, was the like cause of that obsession you know anyways the other type of anxiety disorder that I have is OCD and it's it is an anxiety disorder but it's not at the same time so I get like this idea in my head and if I don't do X Y or Z or I don't stay away from X Y or Z or touch something or do this or use a certain amount of hand sanitizer wipe this down a certain amount of times then something horrible awful bad is gonna happen and it gets stuck in my head and it's this and it's really hard to get me out of there to convince myself you don't have to do that compulsion you can just stay over here and chill and I'm like no I can't so yeah that's where I am. So, where do you go from there, right? After you've established, like, yes, I am struggling with anxiety. Yes, I do need help. Where do you go? So, for me, I started counseling. And counseling doesn't have to cost you money. If you are still in school, you can get free counseling from the counselors there. Um, and that's, like, grade school through college. Like, you can get those. But there's also community centers. Like, you know how they have, like, free clinics and stuff like that. You have people there as well who are 
um, working alongside psychologists to get their degree and things like that. Different programs where they'd allow you to get free or extremely reduced help. And then another option that may be something you need to look into is medication. I know for me, to get over some of my fears, I had to have the medication to make it so I could realize how irrational I was, but I still felt it a little bit, you know? Um, but not to the debilitating fear that I had before, you know? So, um, but definitely the talk therapy helps so much. And there's so many different re resources. There's BetterHelp, which I did have a free trial of. And they were great. Um, it's just expensive for me right now to do that. Um, they do provide financial aid, but it's actually my insurance will cover um, all of a visit if I do face-to-face -face rather than online. But it is a great resource. It's completely confidential. They'll talk with you over the phone or text with you, whichever you prefer, however you like to do it the best. They got you. Um, so that's kind of nice in that way. Um, and then also there's Talkspace. I haven't used that one personally, personally or even tried it out. But I've heard a lot of great things. The other thing to keep in mind is you're not alone. I experience it. I have so many other people in my family who experience it, but I'm not sure that they're ready to be open with it. And you don't have to be ashamed of your anxiety. If somebody makes you feel that way, you need to turn around and walk out because it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's something that you are working through, especially if you're being open like that to others. So there is hope. I have done so many things that for a while I just could not, I could not force myself to do. Like, I had a period of time where some stuff would make me pass out. Like, <laughs> just different things like that. Um, and now I'm doing them. Like, childcare for a few years actually really, really scared me. It scared me to do childcare. I was afraid. I was going to get sick and I was going to get them very sick and something bad was going to happen, you know, like my OCD playing in there. And so like I avoided it. I avoided babysitting and all this other stuff. And it was, it sucked because that was my main like extra fun money. I never made like a whole ton of money, but like I made it so I could do fun stuff, you know. <laughs> and now I'm teaching in a preschool, um, just kind of like part time. So there is hope out there for you guys. I hope that you understand that. You are not alone and anytime you need to talk to somebody, I am here. I only work two days a week and then the rest of the time I'm pretty much at doctor's appointments. So I can reply to your comments, concerns, questions, anything like that. Or even if you just need somebody to listen to you, I can do that in between everything else that I'm doing. The only two days that it might take me a while to respond are Wednesdays and Fridays. So... Other than that, I'm here. And there's so many other people around you who if you would just open up and let them know, they wanna be there for you too. Anyways, you guys, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Subscribe! Subscribe! Subscribe. Please. Anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye, Striped Family.